Hey, what's up everyone? Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids, and today we're looking at this, which is the SoftRep Crate Club Tactical Medical Kit. As you can see up above that, it does say WH Tactical, that's Wild Hedgehog Tactical. I have reviewed two of their medical kits already, and they made this for SoftRep. I'll talk about the Crate Club, how you can subscribe, and other information about that at the end of this video. But what I want to do is just jump right into talking about the med kit, and also mention this down here. So this is the Gerber Remix. This is actually, I kind of have a sweet spot, uh, or soft spot, I should say, for this knife because this knife, in a slightly different form, it had, actually had a button lock right here, was uh, really my first everyday carry knife. And I, I loved it because you could actually hold it like this, and I just felt like that was great control. This one now has a liner lock. Mine, I don't think it had any serrations either. So it is slightly, slightly different. Um, but in the Crate Club for this month, you got this kit right here from Wild Hedgehog Tactical. And then you also got this knife as well. So just do a little close up for you. That's what that looks like. I think it's 7CR, um, 18 MOV uh, for your steel. It's actually kind of a, a good looking knife. It's got that gray tone here, but it's got a little bit of a hint of blue in it. Deploying it's a little bit hard for me right now because my hands are so beat up from the winter that they hurt to push too hard against the thumb studs. But you know, you can hold it certainly like that. You can hold it like this. And then closing it, obviously you can see the liner there, I already pushed it over. And then close it up like so. Clip on the back here, and I just was putting it on like this so I could carry this around together. So that's uh, that's the remix here, and uh, yeah, not a ton more to say about that. What you have here is all this gear in this kit. And I usually like to keep you know all my uh, gear in kits unused and unopened if I can do that. But with a med kit, you should definitely open it up and get familiar with the items. So let's uh, talk about the bag a little bit here from Tactical Tailor, and then we'll take a look at what's actually in the kit. As you can see, the bag is made by Tactical Tailor. I'll just show you the label here. It says Tactical Tailor, made in the USA. And then on the back, for Patriots, by Patriots. This is the first responder bag in Coyote Brown. So looking at the bag, you can see Molly all over the front here. So you can put additional gear on here. You know, if you wanted to put something that you wanted immediate access to without having to unzip or just more gear, you could certainly do that. On the back here, more Molly, and then you have a belt. Certainly that's wearable. And then also you can use this to attach it to other gear or, you know, clip it into, I'm thinking about around um, like part of your car seat, like those two arms that come up for your headrest. If you want to keep this in like your car, your Jeep, your truck, you could certainly attach it there. Up on the top, you can see they've included shears and this little uh, pocket in which to carry them. So you unclip that, and then it's a little bit hard to do one-handed. I'm holding my camera right now. So anyhow, that goes through there, and then these come out. And this is stitched in, stitched in. You got some loops here, so you can you know attach it to gear as well. And then nice big zippers here on the front. So let's open it up now and take a look at the medical gear inside. Here's a look at the shears. Basic, they're gonna get the job done. I do have a set of these from Leatherman. I believe they're called the Raptor or the Raptors. And I'm probably gonna swap these out and put those in. I believe these are actually made, let's see here. It says somewhere on the side. Let me see. Yeah, I think they're, yeah, stainless and made in Pakistan. So anyhow, that's uh, your shears that we had up on the top of the bag. Here's a quick look at everything that comes in the bag. And I thought maybe if you just wanted to pause this video right now, you could actually read through the list and you know you can jot it down, you could snap a picture of it, whatever you want to do. Um, but obviously I'm gonna be taking all the items out, but here's a quick look if you wanted to uh, you know, basically get this information for yourself. As you can see, I've got a pile over here, I've got a pile over here, and then there's some gear that's still in here. Uh, this stuff is organized in a back section one, two, and three there. So I'm gonna keep those organized as they are now, and basically I'm just gonna run through all these items, those, and then this whole set over here that were kind of just stacked inside the bag. These were all in the main kind of largest section within the bag. And uh, like I said, these these are a little bit more organized with those uh, elastic straps around them. So let's go through the gear here. First off, you can see we have an ab pad, extra absorbent it says, and then we have two of these, which are bandage rolls and then some 3M tape. This is probably 3M as far as duct tape is my favorite. And so I'm guessing their medical tape is great as well. Obviously this is for, you know, a significant situation. We got a lot of bleeding going on. Uh, this is stuff that, you know, at this point in my life, yes, I'm comfortable using uh, that stuff. There will be some stuff that I'm gonna talk about here that I'll just be straight up and say, yeah, that's way above my pay grade. But here's some of the basic things that are included uh, in that main section. 
Next up here we have two tourniquets. I'm familiar with the uh, the rats tourniquet. This is the cat, so combat application tourniquet. Um, I've seen this, you know, videos on this, and I've seen videos on this. This one I've actually uh, tested out before, not in a bleeding situation, but just to become more familiar with it. Um, but both of these, uh, my recommendation is always when you want to figure out anything about tourniquets, head over to Skinny Medic. Skinny Medic over on YouTube uh, just does a great job describing how to use these things. You know, his opinion on the different types of tourniquets. Obviously, again, for serious bleeding situations, uh, what's what you're going to be using tourniquets for. Wild Hedgehog Tactical has included uh, these types of items in their other kits. I'm not sure if it's called Celox or Celox. I think it's Celox, but you've got hemostatic gauze here and then hemostatic granules. So this you actually pour into the wound. Again, you got a ton of stuff for major situations when you have bleeding. And if you're not familiar with it, one of the you know most likely situations you're going to come across is somebody who's got massive blood loss, somebody else or yourself. So having lots of ways to deal with blood loss, that's a great thing to have in a medical kit. Next up here, we have a biological personal protection kit. So gloves, a gown, a visor, a bag, and some antiseptic towelettes. Flip it over to the back side just so you can see what that looks like. So obviously this is to keep nasty stuff off of your person. This is one you're probably going to use the most. Hopefully you're not going to have to use a lot of this other stuff a ton, but um, this is your basic first aid kit. So just flipping it over, you can see so you have some ibuprofen, got some a small thing of medical tape. Um, I think I can see it on the front here. Yeah, I mean you got a bunch of you know, basic band-aid type things. So you can see the full list right here. Bandages, medical tape, aspirin, ibuprofen, ibuprofen um, antihistamine, alcohol wipes, gel packs, you know, water gel burn gel pack, water gel burn gel pack. That's a lot to say. Um, iodine wipes. So this is the type of thing for, you know, your basic bumps and bruises and obviously up from that. But this is a thing that I would definitely want to keep in the kit, but keep it, you know, maybe in the front section so I can just unzip, take this out. This is the type of thing I would, you know, want around or accessible for somebody who got a scratch, a cut, something not too significant, uh, but you do want to, you know, get clean up, clean up a cut and put a couple band-aids on it. This is a good thing to have. Next up here we have this, the EverReady First Aid Padded Aluminum Splint. So the idea again is that, you know, it's lightweight and this is basically bendable and moldable into whatever form. So you got to splint somebody's leg, somebody's arm, whatever it is. Um, you got this in your pack and you're ready to use that. There's lots of other ways you can create a splint, but it's nice to have one that's basically already there and ready to go. One quick item to mention here, it looks like this is just a small ace bandage by the looks and feel of it, that's what it is. And you can use this in a variety of different things, in particular with your uh, with your splint, you know, if you wanted to, if when you're using the splint to wrap this around to keep it uh, nice and stable. And certainly, you know, I remember using these on my ankles when I would hurt myself playing basketball in high school and stuff, so ace bandage. All right, at this point, we're moving beyond my pay grade. This is the minor laceration tray. Um, by looking at it, it's, you know, to take care of somebody who's got a minor laceration. I am not in a place where I want to be stitching anybody up anytime soon unless it's a very serious situation no one else is around. But I always say it's good to have something like this. If you have it in your car and you come across, say, an accident and there's a doctor or an EMT there, somebody just pulled over and say they didn't have the gear they needed to help somebody out, you could say, hey, doc, you know, I got this stuff. What, what, do, you, what, do, what do you need? And I may have something that's actually helpful. So minor laceration tray with everything you need to deal with a minor laceration, I'm guessing here. All right, this is a chest seal twin pack. It says compact entry exit wound. Uh, again, this is above my pay grade, but something good to have. In a worst case scenario, I'm around somebody who gets shot or you know something, something like that happens and no one else is there to help. Maybe I could jump in. I mean, it does give you some very basic, uh, very basic inf information there. So white derp, dirt slash fluid from skin with gauze. Grip the red tab to peel clear liner from dressing. Place dressing on patient, adhesive side down. Center vent over wound, firm loop press dressing to skin for good seal. So there you go. And they make it sound really easy, but I'm certain in those types of situations, unless you're well trained, it's not going to just happen, you know, in the most easy fas fashion. But again, nonetheless, good to have it for yourself uh, in a really bad situation to help somebody else and then also to give to somebody who could actually use it because they're familiar with it. I would definitely put this into the above my pay grade uh, level at this point. But again, I'm glad that it's in the kit. All right, this right here is that right there basically it is to uh stick into somebody's nose and have it go down their throat so they have an open airway that's as i understand it at least i dug a little bit around on the internet for that um, i have seen people actually uh, in videos use these on other people who are conscious as they you know basically learn how to basically jam it down somebody's in, in somebody's nose and so it goes down their throat so they have an open airway the idea is if somebody comes unconscious their tongue can become relaxed and block their 
airflow and so this gives you guaranteed open airway so again above my pay grade but good to have and we'll see a lot of this is cool because it's challenged me to think like hey i need to take some medical classes or more medical classes so i can get more comfortable with some of these more um the next level of gear last up here we have this which is an airway berman kit and my understanding is this is similar um, it's a way to open up an airway for somebody who's unconscious or something's going on so they're not uh, getting airflow properly and then the cool thing is that you have the different sizes so you have infant child adult medium large and extra large and then you have them color coded here um yeah so again nothing i have ever used not gonna even try to pretend i have but uh but could certainly be um could certainly be helpful in, in an intense situation i'm just looking to see if they're labeled at all doesn't look like it they're just color coded they would have been helpful if they put the color actually on this uh on this label as well so maybe that's something i'll write in so uh yeah so i know if i ever need to use them or give them to somebody so they could use them so here's the first of the three items in that little back section that i was keeping organized uh the swat t tourniquet so you can use it as a tourniquet you can also see on the back it can be used as an elastic wrap for sprains and strains and then also a pressure dressing wrap it over gauze so uh yeah so it looks kind of like a bike tube like an inner tube to a bike tire and uh, that's the first thing in the uh intersection next we have these which are compressed gauze you can see they're 4.5 inches by 4.1 yards six ply cotton um essentially it's just super compressed gauze it feels like a small brick but obviously expands into something uh much bigger last up in that back section we have a triangular bandage and then this right here which just says the emergency bandage underneath that little fold there but as you can see down here it's made in israel so a lot of people just call this an israeli bandage you can see it's sealed it gives you an expiration date there um on it so you know you know when you should uh replace it with another one some directions on the back and if i remember uh, i actually opened one of these up and yeah i opened one of these up and tested one of these out in another video so uh yeah but you know don't just think oh i've got one so i'm good to go definitely give it a shot so you're familiar with how to actually use it while the bag is still empty i just want to show you inside it does have that uh that orange bottom there and then some elastic here you know to uh, organize gear as well as on the back side as well so you got the main compartment you got these back three and you have these elastic sections front and back and then another section down here as well so yeah lots of options of how to organize your gear actually in the bag and also some more of those elastic bands up on the top as well all right, guys, so you've seen the kit. Let me offer a couple of thoughts here. Uh, the Tactical Tailor Bag, nicely made. A um, lot of attachment points and ways to organize your gear. Uh, secondly, I like all the gear that they've included here. Some of it is definitely above my pay grade, but as I mentioned before, uh, it's not just for me to use. It may be for somebody else to use. I could give them some of the gear. So, you know, if they have a higher level of training than I do, they can help someone out, help me out, help, help out themselves. Um, changes I'll make, I'll probably add a little bit more to that first aid kit, add some more... Um, band-aids different sizes things like that um, honestly probably put some band-aids in there that have you know mickey mouse and snoopy and whatever just for kids my kids other kids just you know a way to kind of uh, give some some mental relief for a kid who's got a scratch or a cut or something like that um, i will swap out these shears for the leatherman shears that i have maybe a little bit more tape and then the last thing is a headlamp and then notepad a uh, headlamp is always good just to have one in there ready to go at all times and not to take it out just check your batteries every once in a while and then a notepad to write things down notepad with a pen pencil and a sharpie as well so those are a couple upgrades but overall still a great great uh great great bag here's a quick rundown on the crate club again this is put together by soft rep and um that's an organization that kind of connects a lot of the special operations communities together um, you can dig into them a little bit more. I'll put links down below if you want to check them out. Uh, probably best known amongst the group uh, as far as like the average person who doesn't know a ton about soft rep or special operations is Brandon, Re Brandon Webb, uh, who I believe is the founder, but also he wrote uh, The Red Circle, which is a well-known well -known book. I think he actually has a, maybe one or two out as well. I think there's at least another one. Anyhow, so the Crate Club, you can get it um, monthly for 30 bucks, and that's the standard. You can get an upgrade to the pro level, which is 60 bucks a month. Or what you can do is go up to the premium level, which is what this kit is, and that's $400 quarterly. And, you know, essentially this is like a lot of other subscription boxes. They select the items uh, that go into a theme or that they just really like for that month, and they send them to you. So there's pluses and minuses to that. Some people are like, oh, I'll just pick my own gear. Other people like the... 
um, fact that somebody else is picking out gear for them, somebody who's trained or been in the field in various areas, and then also just kind of the fun of getting stuff and saying, oh, I wonder what's in this you know, month's box or this quarter's box. So you've got a $30 or a $60 level per month, and then uh, there is a reduction in cost if you buy like you know a bunch of months at once, so you're going to save a little bit more by doing kind of a bulk purchase. And then once again, for $400, you can do it quarterly. So that is the Soft Rep Crate Club. And uh, this is the first one I've gotten, so I'll be doing the next one in another you know, handful of months. I do know that they were so uh, popular that it took them a while to put this one together. So stay tuned, you know, we'll see when I get the next one. I'll report in and let you know uh, what came in it, and we'll talk about the quality of the gear and what we think about it. So far, you know, I, I don't, this is the first item I've ever owned from Tactical Tailor. I've heard good things, and now I can see why I've heard good things, because it looks like it's nicely made and all put together here in the USA. So thanks for checking out the video, and as always, more videos coming soon. Take care.